<laughs> Martin Scorsese's classic mob drama Goodfellas follows Ray Liotta's Henry Hill as he works his way up the mob ladder. The Lucchese crime family associate befriends the likes of Joe Pesci's Tommy DeVito and Robert De Niro's Jimmy Conway on his journey of debauchery, crime and degeneracy. Along the way, Henry marries Karen, played by Lorraine Bracco. His mentor, the man who teaches him the life of crime, advises him and tutors him and bails him out when needs be, is Paul Cicero, played by Paul Sorvino. Now, Goodfellas, of course, tells us the rise and fall of Hill, who may have been a simple associate of a crime family, but he was involved in some major crimes over the years, such as the infamous Lufthansa heist of the 1970s. The film is based on the non-fiction crime book Wise Guy, written by Nicholas Pileggi and published in 1985, who also co-wrote the screenplay to Goodfellas. Pileggi spoke to Hill firsthand and extracted stories and tales from his life to form the book. Now, as you can imagine, Many things from the book did not make it into the movie, as is the norm. There are far too many details in the original source material to fit into a two and a half hour film, and exploring these details is something I enjoy doing on the channel, so feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with videos. But it appears there is also a very cool little detail that did not make it into the film nor the original source material. More on that later, but Goodfellas is a film oozing with nuance and subtext. For example, there's a brilliant insinuation hidden in one of Joe Pesci's lines in the famous Funny How scene, as I talked about in my video called Goodfellas, One Amazing Hidden Detail You Missed. There's also another brilliant detail from the real life events that didn't make it into the movie and is only vaguely hinted at. As we know, Hill is involved in drugs, and when he faces a lengthy spell behind bars, he decides to become an informant for the feds and going into the witness protection program with his family, ratting out his former associates like Jimmy and Paulie. Many years before this, Henry's relationship with his wife Karen deteriorates as she becomes more and more suspicious that he is sleeping around, eventually discovering that he has a mistress. She confronts him in bed, holding a gun to Henry's head who subdues her, yells at her and walks out, leaving a hysterical Karen crying on the floor. Later, Henry is at his mistress's place and is visited by Paulie and Jimmy, who tell Henry that Karen is hysterical and that Henry has to go back to her, the implication being that they've been living separately for some time. They advise Henry that this issue with him and Karen looks bad, it's bad for appearances, it's bad for business, and he has to smarten up and go back to her. Paulie tells Henry in the meantime to go with Jimmy to find a deadbeat who owes Paulie money, but after finding and beating their victim, the duo are caught and sent to prison for four years, and in jail, Henry deals drugs to support his family and is visited by a struggling Karen, wrestling with the lack of funds and looking after the children. Not to mention her fury at finding out that Henry is being visited by his mistress as well. So what is this big secret hidden in the film regarding Paulie? Well, as detailed by Henry Hill in his 1994 memoir, Gangsters and Goodfellas, Karen, believe it or not, was actually sleeping with Paulie while Henry was in jail. Yup, while she was giving Henry grief for being visited by his girlfriend, she was apparently getting smashed by Hill's boss behind his back. In fact, there's actually a huge story behind this, and it could have been its own major subplot in the movie because Tommy, played by Pesci, as volatile and psychopathic as he was, reportedly beat and tried to rape Karen while Henry was in the can. This is all after the Billy Bats incident, and when Paulie found out, seeing as though he was sleeping with her, he was furious and he spilled the beans to the Gambino crime family that Tommy was the one who murdered Bats, and Tommy was subsequently taken out. Hill says that he didn't find out about this long after the fact, and this entire episode is something I cover in more detail in my video Why Was Jimmy Not Whacked For Killing Billy Bat? None of this is mentioned in the movie. We are never told in the film how the Gambinos discovered it was Tommy who whacked Bat, but it appears it was his own boss Paulie who sold him out. In addition to this, despite coming to Henry and giving him marital advice, being something of a second father to him, he was actually banging his girl the entire time. There is only one hint in the film that references this fact, and that's in the scene at Henry's Gumas. When Paulie is telling Henry that he has to go back, he tells Henry he will talk to Karen beforehand, saying, I'm going to talk to Karen, I'm going to straighten this thing out, I know just what to say to her. And a few seconds later he adds, I know how to talk to her, especially to her. 
At face value, this seems like Paulie reassuring Henry that his marriage can still work, that Paulie just has a way with talking to women, that he understands how Karen is feeling. But when you take into consideration that he was actually sleeping with Karen, all of a sudden this scene has an entirely new meaning. Viewers might want to take note of Paulie's expression as well. He looks like he's almost got a shit-eating grin on his face, like he's got an inside joke that he's about to burst out laughing at. Now, as far back as I can remember, this detail about Paulie smashing Karen isn't in the original book the movie is based on Wise Guy, and I believe the first time Hill spoke about it was in Gangsters and Goodfellas, which was written after the film came out. So I wonder if the filmmakers were even aware. If they weren't, I guess this line of dialogue is just a happy coincidence, but there's every chance Hill told this to Pelleggi or someone involved with the movie, and instead of making a big thing about it, they chose to only hint at it. After all, the movie is better with the affair only being subtly hinted at. Because Paulie is of course something of a mentor figure to Henry. He was there for him, he looked after him, and he is eventually betrayed by him. First by doing drugs when Paulie specifically said not to do this, and then by ratting him out, sending the old man to die in jail, which, as mentioned in a line in the film, was pretty much Paulie's worst fear. Paulie is as close to being a tragic figure in the movie. He's the closest figure to Don Corleone Goodfellas has, and you can't help but feel sorry for the way Hill sent him down. But there's many stories about the real Paulie that gives you an impression that he was actually a very vile character in real life, nowhere near as charismatic and lovable as Sovino played him. And if the film incorporated these real life details, like him sleeping with Karen, audiences might all of a sudden feel that he deserved what he got in the end and he wouldn't be anywhere near as likeable. Tommy's the psycho, Jimmy's the wild one, and Paulie is the cool elder one. It would be a disservice for the film for his character to be revealed to be just as depraved and deplorable as Henry and his cronies, and I think the way it goes down in the movie is the best way. It does have to be mentioned that Henry Hill was a notorious liar, so we even have to take Paulie sleeping with Karen with a pinch of salt. Maybe he just wanted to make his wife look bad after their divorce, or maybe he saw how the film made him look like an asshole for sending Paulie to prison so he made up a story about Paulie sleeping with his wife to make Paulie look bad. Maybe he was broke at the time and needed material for his new book. But if it is true, why wasn't it included in the original book? Well, there could be many reasons and we could speculate for a long time. Maybe he just didn't want to look like a cuck. But is it feasible that Karen would sleep with Paulie? Because in real life, he didn't look like this. He looked like this. But I think it's definitely plausible. She would have been hard up while Henry was away and Paulie would have obviously been providing her with cash. She may also have wanted to get back at Henry in a way, with him having cheated on her. Maybe that's how it all began. She went crying to Paulie to woe about Henry sleeping around and one thing led to another. Or maybe this coked up woman just found Paulie attractive. It's possible. He was a high-ranking member of a powerful crime family. Take a look at James Gandolfini's Tony Soprano, a powerful mob boss who has no problem attracting women. And even though Gandolfini may not have been the best looking man around, actresses from The Sopranos have commented that he was still very attractive, with a charming, powerful aura around him. Perhaps this was the case with Karen and Paulie. Earlier in the film, she witnesses Henry beat up a man and he tells her to hide a gun, and she freely admits the incident turned her on. Perhaps Karen was just attracted to dangerous and violent men. It's actually kind of funny in retrospect when you think about the fact that in this scene Paulie sends Henry away to Florida for a while so he can talk to Henry's wife. And then when Henry goes to prison, you can imagine that Paulie had ample time to talk to Karen. In any case, I just thought you guys might find this interesting. For more videos and similar content, consider subscribing to the channel. And thanks for watching.